Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop. There's a man behind the camera and his name is Mitch. Thank you for doing that, Mitch. We have a project today. There's been a lot of interest in my old, old belt sander. I made this in 1985 and it's still working fine. It's just worn and there's some things that I don't like about it. This is, this is really wide here, so I don't like that. I don't like the fact that one time the belt broke once in all those years and it whacked me on the hand really well because there's no guard here. I, I've got a bunch of holes and I use this hole to hang it on the wall. So those are the things that I like. So what I wanna do is to make a new belt sander and I've got some parts here. It's gonna be a lot different. It's, uh, the whole style is new because you know a lot of years have gone by. So I'll show you what I got here. I bought some parts here. I went to Sabre Industrial Supplies and these are the parts. There's an arm and there's a lever and I got all the part numbers here and the prices in Canadian dollars. There's a couple wheels you have to buy and then you need the actual air grinder itself. Now I went on eBay for less than $30 you can buy them. I think that's US and uh, I spent more. I got a brand name. I got Ch Chicago Pneumatic, so this is gonna last me my life. I made, I don't have a drawing, but I made some shapes like usual, and this goes like that. And this is gonna support the arm up there. That's what that looks like. So last night, to save a little bit of time, I made this part. So this fits on the end like that. I have to open it up with a screwdriver. It's a little tight. And then there's going to be a cage, which I hold on to. Instead of hanging on to these two plates, there's going to be a, a, a cage that's made out of stainless rods. So I went shopping yesterday and I bought some 3 16 stainless rods. So I'll, I'll be bending that and TIG welding that. And this piece here, it looks pretty thin, but it's gonna be made out of inch plate. So that'll, that'll get made, that'll get, get cut like that somehow. In 1985, I could buy a new Dynafile belt center. And I think, I think Mitch is gonna flash that up on the screen now, what you can get. Back in 1985, it was $700. That's what I remember and it's like I didn't have a lot of money so I made my own and I saved $400 so all the parts back in 85 cost me $300. I bought a El Cheapo grinder, I probably paid about $35. So it was interesting when I went back to the supply house and I asked how much a new grinder is because it's a lot of years have gone by, it's $730 basically which is not a whole lot. And if you add up all the parts, I think you're gonna probably spend about $400 now. So if you make your own, you could probably save $300, something like that. So we got lots, lots of work to do today. I think the first step is to mark this out with some red felt pen and go to the bandsaw. I got a wax here, it's a, a stick wax. And if you put it on the blade, while the blade's running, it just helps it to cut the aluminum a little bit better. So let's do that. I'll raise this up a little bit, get some access. There we go. I'm gonna cut this square because then I can hold this in the mill vise and then I can do this. If I cut this all out, it's gonna be very hard to hold this in the vise. So I'm, I'm thinking ahead just a little bit. I got my height blocks here. I need some spaces up here so that it spaces away from where I wanna cut. That'll work. If I bandsaw all this, it'd be very hard to hold that. I 
think what I'll do first is to machine this piece here because it has to fit into the holder which mounts onto the onto the die grinder. So that's pretty crucial. So let's do that first. I took my piece of cardboard, which is, is the template for this, and I took scotch tape and I put it back into my drawing, or my sketch, it's not really a drawing. So if I lay this on top, what's, what's critical here is the angle here, to, to get the angle right so that it fits into that at the correct angle. So now that I've got my, my drawing, my sketch here, if I line up this, I'm lining up my ruler with this line here. So when I put this into the mill vise, now at least I know I've got my angle right. So that's gonna line up with the top of the mill vise. And then I'm gonna mill that little shoulder there. And I'll also mill off the end because I know, I know what the thickness of this is. It's, it, it's slightly under three quarters of an inch. So, helps having a drawing for sure. Even though it's not really a drawing, it's a facsimile of a drawing. Let's go do this. Look at that, very, very close. I just take a little bit off the other side. That's a nice fit. There we go, look at that. Okay, so you see how it's a little bit proud here? What I wanna do is I wanna take it down to that same height so that this, this base here is <clears throat> all the same. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll take this off, use some red felt pen and I'll mark it with my scriber. That's a nice fit. I've got room here for, for two screws, so they're gonna go like that. And that'll be pretty strong. And then once the cage goes on and it connects this with that, it'll be very strong. So, kind of excited. I like building stuff, especially tools, because tools last a long time if you make them nicely. Okay, I got a piece of flat bar and I'm gonna raise I'm gonna put this on the vise and I'm gonna match it up to that line. I'm gonna get the angle right. I'll take two cuts. I'll take the first cut and then a second cut. There we go. Oh, okay, like that. So we have to mark out for the holes now. So let's do that. Put my marking die on there. If I take half of the width, it's three eighths of an inch because this is three quarters. That, so I'm looking at the Center. The center is right about there. I line that up with that. So, do you notice how I held the center punch at an angle? Yeah. And then I move it to straight up. And I'll try not to drop this next one. Line it up like that. All right, we'll go to the drill press now. So it's a five mil. 
So my tap drill is 4.2 mil. You knew that, right? Okay, so those are gonna get tap five mil, and then I drill this out, and I also countersink these. Five mil drill. There we go. I got a countersink and I I narrowed it down so it gets into those places much better. If you got a full size countersink, it, it'll hit. You go. got a spiral point tap. That means that on aluminum anyway, I can just go straight down. I don't have to stop and back up. It's kind of nice. That's anchor lube, good for tapping aluminum. Gotta make sure that the tap is straight up and down. That's where my eye comes in. And it looks good. It was my birthday last week. I've been making things out of metal for 54 years now. Amazing. And I still like what I do. Can you tell? I just like making stuff. So let's see how this all fits together. I think that turned out fine. We're gonna drill some holes now. There's a hole for a roll pin. I'm gonna show you what a roll pin does. A roll pin. If you've never seen a roll pin before, this is a roll pin. If you look closely, can you zoom in here? Can you see how it's a flat piece of metal which has been rolled and there's the seam. It doesn't quite join. It's not welded or anything. So what happens is this is a piece of, of strong steel. It's not weak. It's got, it's got good carbon in it. So it's, it's got a spring to it. This hole here, can you see that hole there? That's, a, that's an eighth inch hole. That is right here. That's where it all hinges. Can you see how it hinges? So what I need to do is, this is an eighth of an inch. Let's actually measure it. There we go, one, two, five, five, it's, oh, one, two, six. It's basically an eighth of an inch. And if you measure the roll pin, it's gonna be oversized. See, it's 132, so it's like seven thou oversized. What happens is when you put a little, a little chamfer on one end, you can hammer it in and it really sticks because it wants to spring back. Very handy. And these come in all different standard sizes. This one happens to be an eighth of an inch. So the hole we're gonna, we're gonna make through here needs to be just a little bit larger than an eighth of an inch so that <clears throat> So the roll pin can slide in, and then when we put in the arm, it holds in the middle, but it can, it can rotate in this piece. So I wanted to show you what a roll pin does, because if you didn't know, very, very handy. This is the hole right here. That's where the roll pin goes. So might as well punch that one first. And then there's something else that goes here. It's a piece of stainless steel and it's gonna hold the cage. And then we have three lightning holes. So I'll punch the two end ones and then I'll connect it in the middle so that everything lines up. These three holes are just to add lightness. It's the cool factor, right? I'm gonna drill eighth of an inch hole first and then I'll make it I'll make it larger after I drill the hole. 
that way it's more likely to stay on size than if I just take a drill and drill straight down through. So the roll pin is 130, 133, depends where you measure it. I got 132 there, so. so I got 135 here, so I think that's probably the right drill to use. Got to have a little bit of clearance, just a little. It goes in. It's not falling through. So that's good. Okay. Look how precise I am being here. See that line extends? I think that's where the that's where the spring wants to go. That's where the hole goes. Here we go. <coughs> Got a 5 16 10 mil because the slot has to end up almost 3 8 So if you use a, a 3 8 10 mil, it usually cuts a little bit oversized. So going one size smaller, 5 16 I don't know if it likes that. Well, it's not getting a choice. I might have to take a little bit off the end because it's a little tight there. But that's basically how it works. Look at that. That looks good. On this belt sander here, my old one, it's got a pulley. So we need to make a pulley for this one. It's just 6061 aluminum. It's round, inch, inch OD. So I'm gonna go over to the bandsaw and, and cut a piece off and then go to the lathe and machine out the bore. It's gonna be a shrink fit on there. That's what I did last time and that worked fine. This is basically all one size. So we'll measure that and bore it out. So I'm going to measure here. I've got a micrometer because I need to be exact. This has to fit really well. 622. So 622, if I make it 621, 0.621, that'll be good. Six thousand to come out. I think maybe that might work. We're gonna see if the propane torch does the trick. If the propane doesn't work, then oxyacetylene, but we'll see. It only has to grow a couple thou, so I guess we'll find out. At least with the propane, I don't think I can overheat it. Okay, we'll try it. 
This is my spacer. Oh yeah. That worked pretty good. That's a good shrink fit, isn't it? And now we know that the propane worked fine. Cool. It doesn't take much to make me happy, does it? So what we're gonna do now is to assemble this as much as we can, and then we'll work on the hand shield, the hand guard. I'm gonna do all the, all the polishing and the sanding later. We don't have time for that today, but we, if we can get it built, then that's good. So next I have to work on the roll pin because the roll pin is going to go in. Here's the spring. We talked about the spring. I need to cut a roll pin that's the right length. So moment for that. Okay. I need to just knock that off now. It's so hard. I can't use a hacksaw. Hacksaw doesn't work on this. So like I said, you can't hacksaw a roll pin. It's too hard. So you have to grind it and then you can take a little hammer and you give it a tap. And if you saw the sparks coming off that it's, it's nice orange, orangey yellow sparks. That means the metal's hard, got carbon in it. Oh, that went in. Looks good. I need a screwdriver to open up the slot because it's a pretty good fit. There we go. Oh, fits. Okay. I might have to make this a little bit narrower here because you see how it kind of, of bulges out a little bit. I don't know if that's an issue. See how this one is really worn. See that one there? It's been worn down a lot, but this one's old. Okay, so this is first time we're firing it up. There we go. That seems to work just fine. So what we're going to do now, I'll show you how these, see these, these pieces of stainless steel. I'm going to attach these onto here and then we're going to make a cage that I can, I need something that I can hold my hand here. You see this one? That's how I hold it. I've got one hand here and one hand on the, on the body of the head of the die grinder. So. I want something here, and there has to be some sort of a, of, of a guard here that goes over the pulley, so we're going to make something. So there's going to be two mounting points. I put quite a bit of thought into this, but obviously when it's all made, then I'll go, oh, should have done it this way. That's how things sometimes work. But I, I can TIG weld right under that. I'm going to grab my stainless steel, and we're going to make some... I'm going to make a hoop down here first. See all this bending stuff I've got? Can you see this? This is what I'm going to use, use to shape some of the bends. I want, I want to have a hoop here and then I can weld onto the hoop. So whatever comes off here, and I think I'm also going to have a hoop which also comes around here as well because this doesn't have to go down all that far. So I've got room in here for a hoop. I was trying to imagine last couple of days what this would look like when I was at this stage. And it was really hard for me to see it in my mind, but now that it's in a physical form here, now I can see a little, a little better what I want to do. Let's do this one first. So I need to... I need to have a bend that's got an idea of about that. So what have I got here? 
Okay, so this one, this one looks pretty close because what's gonna happen when you bend this, especially stainless, it's got spring back. You bend it and it wants to spring back somewhat. So let's try a bend using this. So if I hold it back here, it's gonna wanna bend all this. So you need to hold it up close and pull into the bend. Okay, yeah, see, see how it springs? That's what I was talking about. See how it springs back? So you gotta go a little bit more. So what I can do is this too. I can ease it out just a touch. Also, I wanna line this up too, like that. There we go. See those lines? That's how I'm lining it up with. Because what I want to do, if you're wondering, I want to put it like that. So that is the, that's the halfway point, but I've got the width of this. So I need to take off, those are 7 16 So half of 7 16 is Three and, three and a half sixteenths. Doesn't make sense, but. So there's my line. That's where I'm gonna cut. Okay, we are tapped. Good. So now that's done. Now I can figure out, because I've got Allen screws on both sides holding it on, I can figure out what angle I want now, because I'm not, I think I want it kicked out just a little bit. I'm going to make a loop for this one here. I'm holding that in the vise. I squeeze it kind of tight. And we'll go around a bit more. There we go. Okay, I can I can actually mark it where I want to cut it now. Maybe if I leave a little bit extra on there. Okay, here we go. That's a pretty good tack. I don't think I got to take it off and tack the back. I think that'll be that, that'll be okay. Let's go bend some more metal and figure out the rest of the shape. Okay, so now we got we got two rings. Maybe we'll try about there. So I'll use the larger radius. Well, I guess we could we could put a section in and just see what it looks like. Okay, it started. I guess that's, that's, that's the direction we're going. And now we have to fill in. I wanna put something over here and then one more piece down there because that'll be good for my hand and then something has to come up over the pulleys, so. It's a, a quick tick tack. I'm going to make a piece that goes right down the middle like that and then we'll see we'll see how it feels when I hold my hand on the after after it cooled down not when it's hot I'm going to cut it right about there and then we'll mark that one
So yeah, we've got a larger bend on the outside one. And I think that, I think that looks okay. So we'll do a little tig tack now. Okay, so got to do the ones up around the rollers. We'll see how that works out. If I drill a hole and I tap it right about there, I can have a little shield that comes. If I had a standoff, a piece of a dowel, like half inch, half inch round, say, it could come up here and then I could have a little piece of aluminum which comes around here. I don't really need anything to go from here to here. All I need is a piece of aluminum just to just to go over there. And it doesn't have to be that big. It can be like that. It can be some nice nice shape like a like a teardrop or something like that. And there's the bolt hole. You have a little Allen screw going there and it just it protects from this spinning round. I think I'd like to add one more one more piece in here. That'll kind of fit fill it. Yeah, because if I if I'm holding this, see see how my fingers can go in there? Don't want that. So I, I, I need one more piece to go like that. Bending, bending. Oh that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna get the bends to line up more or less. And there's my cut line. I'm gonna tic tac this one on first because then I'll know how much space I have here and then I'll match the other side. Make a mark. Okay, now we just have to put on the guards for this guy. So I'll drill a hole and, and tap it. How hard can that be? So that's where I want it, right there, because that seems to be centered. So the center of the hole is going to be right there. Eyeballing. When you're using a parting tool, you have to use lots of coolant. You can feel it when the tool bit just touches the end of the vernier. Okay, so what's supposed to happen? I'm supposed to catch it. And that's the guards. It's pretty minimal, but everything on this belt sander is pretty minimal. I like the look. Not sure if, if it would win any safety awards, but that's okay, it's mine. Always turn the cardboard. That's why I learned in art in grade seven. Hold the scissors and you turn the card. I'll trace it, I'll drill the hole and then cut it out, and then we're done.
No CNC in this shop. A lot of hand filing. So, I'm gonna put these on, see what it looks like. And it's basically, it's kind of done. It needs some polishing up. The welds have to be finished and things like that, but it's basically done. And these are the little guards that go over there. I think they're kind of cute. I know everything's kind of exposed on this, but I like that. So it feels good to hold there. There's nothing really sharp or anything like that. So I guess as time goes by, I'll give you some feedback on how it works out. Thanks for watching our video. We appreciate that very much. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. You can subscribe. Underneath are some links. There's a little arrow on your phone. There's show more on your computer. Mitch and I both like really good coffee. You could buy us a coffee, shirts, hoodies, mugs. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.